Hey everybody, we are back again for our real estate Q&A session week 15. We have been consecutive, uh, <clears throat> not consecutive, but we have been consistent for 15 weeks straight with this thing. Uh, real estate question Q&A uh, for you guys every single week, every Thursday, 12 o'clock. Uh, I am happy to uh, report to you guys again and uh, get this thing going on today. We got a special guest um, that I'm going to be bringing on today to offer some insight and another perspective in the real estate game. Uh, so basically, yeah, we're going to be a, it's going to be a good show today. Uh, what's going on, Sneakers Bean? Always supportive. Uh, every every Thursday, 12 o'clock. Uh, shout out to everybody that has been rolling and consistently showing up and uh, being per, uh, being great participants to what we have going on. Um, again, I just want to make sure that I show some appreciation for everybody and make sure that everybody is heard. And not only everybody is heard, but that everybody is uh, you know well accounted for when it comes to continuously showing up. Oh, whoa, we got Jarvis on here. Uh, all the way out in LA. Uh, glad to see you come on, man. I don't know if you're trying to buy a house out there in LA, big money, but uh, it is a good thing to see you on here supporting the show like like normal. Uh, but yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, we do this every single week, Thursday, 12 o'clock. Uh, we're answering anything, everything real estate related. If you have any questions, if you have any uh, concerns or anything like that and what you're doing in your real estate journeys, this is the place to come and ask um ask those questions and most of the time i'll either have a special guest online or i won't and if i don't then obviously that's time for you guys to come on and uh join the live and you know chit chat with me as well so any questions that you guys have make sure you tap right there on that little question mark box and we will include the questions and i'll post them up on the uh, feed as we continue to talk about some of these things um so yeah make sure you direct all questions to that answer box Feel free to comment if you have any questions concerns feel free to ask uh but we're gonna go ahead and go on with what we have going on today with our show uh we do have a special guest i'm going to be joining uh having joined and it looks like she's already in if you guys didn't see the post that i posted up last night on the store we have the builder bay uh which is gabriel goodwin uh that we're going to be adding on to the show today which i personally know as well and i've done a little bit of work with her so I wanted to make sure that I add her on today because she's out there in D.C. doing some great things. And she's also a developer. Uh, she's been killing it in the game when it comes to development and offering a new type of uh, wave of development that she I'm going to allow her to speak on and what she's doing over there. But <clears throat> when it comes to bigger things outside of single family residence and uh, buying, you know, single family homes and and investing she offers a different perspective because she's on a different level on the development side so i know that some sometimes we have those questions regarding development and uh investing in different communities and what that looks like from the development side so i wanted to make sure i reached out to her uh and so she could join so Gabriel, if you can join the live ask me to join and i will include you on here so we can get you on here so we can talk to these folks uh outside of that we got uh, if you guys don't know, if you guys are new to the show, basically what I do is anytime that people come on here, uh, anybody that joins the live and they pop up on the feed, I shout you out. So it's all about love here and anybody that wants to support. Uh, so we got Faith. Uh, Faith, you're going to be on the show here shortly. You, you, you uh, big dog status. So make sure you stay ready. That's not your first time joining. Jay Lee 34. Uh, let's go ahead and get Dave Riel on here. Uh, let's see. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully my Wi-Fi doesn't kirk out on me. But... We're going to see what we can do. Let's see. Hey! How's it going? You already know what is going on. Another day, another dollar, trying to make it happen out here in this crazy world. What's going on with you? Same, per usual. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, look at y'all. Look, we got Dabrielle on the show. Uh, I'll allow her to introduce herself. If, if Dabrielle, I know this is the first time on here. Um, but basically what we do every week is we come on here every Thursday at 12 o'clock and we answer and talk anything real estate related investing wise. And I allow people to come on and ask anything, everything, and I'll answer to the best of my ability. And sometimes we have guests on here like yourself that specialize in different things. And so it just offers a different perspective and allows people to 
uh, you know, get insight that they can't really get online or anything like that, or be able to connect with folks that are doing the business, the kind of business that we're doing. So uh, definitely helpful. But yeah, go ahead and tell the people what you do, what, uh, where you're from and all that kind of stuff. All right, guys. So I'm Davery L. Uh, good one. I'm from Jacksonville, but I live, you know, in D.C. now. Been here since twenty early 2013, uh, February of 2013. So I'm a real estate broker um, and developer. And my specialty is container homes. So the only form of new construction that we build with is with shipping containers. Um, and that's kind of our line of work is pushing through um, a stream in DC, the whole DMV, but really focusing right now on DC, um, parts of Northern Virginia, and then Montgomery County, since Prince George's um, does not have all of the necessary regulations that we need um, yet, right. but Right. Primarily, um, we're doing container homes in Washington, D.C. So, and for those people who are like, oh, what's a container home? Yeah. Um, if you go to my page, there's a video rendering of what they are. They're not like, don't think, you know, trailer in your mind. Kind of get that because that's the first thing that pops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You exactly. Know, <laughs> started out um we have a project the one we're doing now in southeast dc and the neighbors were like listen do not bring these overpriced trailers into our communities mm. we do not do that here like i know you're from florida <laughs> <laughs> overpriced trailers up in our communities and it was funny because it was like you know after we presented them with the first design and they got to see you know these 1800 square feet townhomes three bed two and a half bath with a den a wraparound rooftop deck they're like what that's a container like, <laughs> like a container um it is not shaped like they're just like wow like i had no clue it was a shipping container um, right if people who are familiar with like the DC area, we have several restaurants like El Rey and a few others that the base of them are made with, you know, the envelope is shipping containers. So right. for people, you know, who are like, Hey, I'm interested in a container home. Um, we do a wave of tiny homes. That's been kind of like our little pocket right now. We're getting a lot of traction on tiny homes. Everybody's like, I want to put a tiny home in my backyard. So yeah. that's been um, where we've kind of seen a lot of buzz, but um, it's just trying to manage, manage it all, you know? You ain't going to shout out the name of your company? Oh, Alluvial. Yes. Uh, alluvial what? You guys, you, guys, you guys do a bunch of different things. I suck at promo for the company. I, I know. <laughs> I don't, everybody's like, you don't post on social media like that. You really don't, like, do much. And I'm like, I'll post every now and then, but I'm not super active. Yeah. But it's Alluvial Enterprise. Um, and for those of you, only two people have known what the word alluvial means. You so, told me. Yeah. So you told those me. who don't know, um, an alluvial mineral is when they go to farm gold, it's essentially a black soil composite that has not been washed by water. So like it's gold and it's like rarest form and they go to melt it down and convert it into the gold, you know, refining process. But a lot of, a lot of, a lot of thought went into that one. I know. A lot of thought. So you guys, uh, so you have this enterprise, uh, you guys have different, uh, segments of business so you got the broker side you have the development side uh, you got the construction side uh and i believe you just bought a truck so was that fall of construction too look at you look at you yeah it's crazy though because and we have a question here what's the average cost of a container home so oh yeah tiny home starts at seventy five thousand. Um, and they can go all the way as 
expensive depending on you know what you decide to build it doesn't have to be but the tiniest product that we do have and the most affordable product starts at seventy five thousand, and that's literally out the door that's your architectural plans that's your permits that's your entire product starts at seventy. so with that question because that came from Keneal shout out to Keneal because he consistently shows up every week um, and on the development side, I, I, I have a question on his behalf. I know it's something that he would probably want to ask you because uh, we had a conversation offline uh, a couple weeks ago about development. And uh, so I'll get to that. I'll, I'll ask that question for him because I feel like he, he, there's something that he would like to know. Uh, but for the, con for the container homes um, and the, you know, the smaller homes like that, like how did you guys get into that niche? Because it is a niche. Yeah, it's, um, so I saw a development that was gonna, they were working on the plans and it was a container plaza in Alabama. And just as I kind of followed this project, I was like, you know, this is a great idea because these containers are just sitting around everywhere. Right. Like, we're from Florida, you know, ports, when you go, it's just ports of just like containers that are just kind of sitting. And mm -hmm. I'm is so dope because you're using a sustainable product like it's already there not in you so it's you know a repurposed product and the envelope is actually stronger um from a building code perspective so like even with the containers like a normal house is a wood frame so a container is a steel frame so the right. same that like wood rots you know steel rust and it takes longer for steel to completely rust away than it does for wood to rot away. Mm -hmm. So you have a house that's it's fire, you know, resistant, essentially, like it's meant and then people act like, oh, will it blow away? I'm like, no, that the home is bolted and secured to the cement, you know, like it's a fixed structure. It's not going to blow away. And these containers are meant to go over like heavy seas. You know, they travel over heavy seas, they it's crazy when you look at the overall, um, just from a building structural standpoint, uh, the strength of the container. So it's just, as we, I started doing more digging, I started kind of staying in more container homes. Um, I started just, I even, you know, went to Bali, got a chance to see like a bunch of different, you know, container homes from a residential standpoint. I started seeing more restaurants vegas has container park um and i was i just started digging more into it i was like you know what there's really no container or just developer on the east coast that focuses on container and i thought it was a niche there so um from then we just you know we started partnering with different architects um and pushing through and putting out a pipeline of container products. Yeah, so. yeah, you did, you did that fairly, uh, I mean, cause I remember when you guys started or uh, when you were actually, uh, you know, starting from the ground up hustling. Uh, yeah, so uh, real quick, cause um, you know, Dave, <laughs> Dave Real, well, first of all, we're from the same city, Duval, shout out to Duval, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but Dave Real came up here and, um, you know, she came up here a while back, and she was working at the Pentagon and uh, doing her doing her hustle grind at the Pentagon, and just stepped out on faith and uh, went and started her own brokerage. And uh, I remember when she had, uh, you know, got her family up here and had them cold calling, had them on the phones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she had her mom up here working for her, all that kind of stuff, and. You know, lo and behold, a couple years, a couple years passed by. We had a business opportunity ourselves, and um, I think that fell through because of the client. But anyway, we've, you know, we've done some dealings. I remember back then you were only working on some smaller projects, and now you know you're, you know, you're doing some bigger things. You've got a construction company, all this, that, and the third. So, uh, shout out to you for hustling and grinding and making this, uh, this thing an enterprise. You know. <laughs> You know, uh, but the, uh, the, the the container home thing is very interesting. 
Um, I'd like to know, you know, just personally, like what does, like what is the future of container homes? And I know it's sustainable, but you know, when you look at DC, DC is really progressive, right? And you're, you're able to kind of get into those spaces with that niche because people like that kind of stuff, especially over there. Um, but what does that look like? I mean, in your opinion, what does that look like for like a city like Baltimore getting into some more, getting, into, getting into more of the like inner city uh, areas and suburban areas? Is that possible? Do you see it happening soon? And how difficult would that be? I definitely see, you know, container being the way, but I see it thriving more in urban cities and because the cost of living and the cost of construction is yeah. so so the building costs and just property costs overall is so high and this helps like off skew that cost from like a time and a financing standpoint. Mm -hmm. In Baltimore that's where I think it'll be interesting to see a wave of container products, but the housing inventory is already a surplus of like affordable housing there. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, in areas where there are already, you know, an abundant amount of affordable housing that us providing an affordable product is going to be the best niche for those locations. So like mm -hmm. regular fees though, where, you know, the rent and people are paying $2,000 for a studio and you can build a studio container home for 75000 yeah. which is just 325 to $350 a month. Yeah. And you rent it out for 2000 a month. Mm -hmm. That's a better look versus in Baltimore for 75000 you can get something that's actually maybe a two or three you know, bedroom, depending on, you know, you will have to put some work in it at that price, of course, but yeah. you can still already find something that's not the studio. Right. So markets are different. And just keeping that in mind of like, we have an affordable, I think our product works in the niche that we've selected. Yeah. You know, when home prices are just so expensive in DC, and we can come through our turnaround time is quick. We have a sustainable product, a durable product, an affordable product. Yeah. That's kind of where we thrive. But it gets hard when we start going out into Baltimore. And the thing is, too, we're going to start playing. Right now, we're doing a lot of residential products. Yeah. But we're getting into mixed use, too. So we're starting to play more into exploring more mixed use projects. Um, and for those and everybody who doesn't have like a, a commercial real estate background, mixed use is just, it has two uses, both a residential and a commercial component. So when you see, you know, uh, retail at the bottom and then residential housing on top, those are mixed use buildings. Yeah. Starting to get and explore more into mixed use with container, um, and really doing, some different I want to roll out a line of products that are different in nature as a whole not just container um yeah. I read this one post and it was just like and it's something that like didn't hit me even in one of our upcoming like developments we've really had to focus on like what group do we want from a a larger development like what's our kind of target group and area that we want to focus on yeah and it's crazy because I've made a shift and it's because I heard this one post and it was like, you know, if things were inclusive for everybody, we wouldn't need to feel like we wouldn't need diversity if things were really just all inclusive for all people. Right, right. Um, so in this next shift, even with the container, I think my focus is figuring out how to make more all inclusive buildings, but that's just all inclusive for everybody buildings to where you know, not just from like, a, yeah, they're cool in nature from a container standpoint, but yeah. they're cool in nature. if you ever had a disability, like you would never feel like you have a disability because everything from how we design a building is equipped to make it feel like life is just normal for you. Yeah. No, that's, that's I think dope. like, yeah, it is taking a different approach. It's not just container, but it's looking at how to make sustainable housing as a whole. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of like, um, 
that's kind of like what you have to do in this day and age. You got to pivot sometimes. You can't be one track minded, especially from your perspective where you are able to offer, uh, you know, more services and things like that because you have the infrastructure and the construction to do certain things. So if you're able to pivot and also provide, you know, different ways to develop, then I'm pretty sure you'd be able to cater to some of these communities that actually need your need your help. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> before I get to my question, I got another question. Uh, but usually what I do is I shout people out when they pop up in here. Uh, you know, we got uh, a, what is that? A G, A G, A G, A G, shout out to A G. I don't know if he's still on here or not. Synergistic Grunt. That's Quan, man. Quan, why you got that long name, man? What's going on, brother? Uh, we also got uh, Catastrophe, Rip. Kevo, what's going on? Appreciate you showing up in the no one. What's going on, brother? It's another fam, you alumni. Look, anybody that's on here right now, I'll tell you guys, shout out the show. Screenshot what we're doing right now. Screenshot this pic. I mean, screenshot this screen right now and drop it in your stories and let folks know what we're doing every Thursday. Drop your gems, different perspectives, whether it's me, whether it's special guests. Right now, we got Gabrielle on. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead, screenshot us right now and go to your story and tag us and tell them to come join or stop by next Thursday because that's what we do. We drop in the gym. This is not for us. We live this life, just, you know, every day. Um, this is for y'all. You know, like to expose you guys to different people, different experiences. Make sure you guys ask questions. If you have anything, drop it right there in the question, little question box thing right there so I can post your question on the screen for me or Gabrielle. Uh, but again, every Thursday, 12 o'clock, answering anything, everything real estate related. Uh, yeah, Wade, hey, hey guys, how y'all doing? Uh, just call me Logan. How you doing, brother? Pop. Yeah, okay, let me see what we got. Yeah, just call me Logan. All right, anyway, I got some questions, uh, a couple more questions, actually, um, in regards to the whole, you know, development thing. So, uh, so with, like, the container homes, like, how is it, because, uh, I mean, you've, you've already started your project, uh, but has it, is, is, is that, has it been well received, like, in the, you know, in the black community? Have they been receptive to that? Do they look at container homes? Is even though you're providing affordable housing and things like that, is it looked at as, like, gentrification? Just because of the look, it's something completely different. You know what I'm saying? Is it looked at gentrification? Do they accept it? You know, is this something that we can or you can push in these kind of areas? Honestly, what's been crazy is I've got the most love and outpour from the Black community. Like, whenever I take it to them, it's like, go ahead, Black girl, you better <laughs> girl. And when they see the render, like, when they see, you know, the product that we're building, they're like, wow, you really making this thing? Like, <laughs> let me tell yes. You. So, yes. Easy because, you know, you would think like, we'd be like, eh, what is this? But now that it's coming to fruition, like, we've been like, no, like, I want to see you push this thing through. Let me make some phone calls. Let me connect. <laughs> So it's like, as we're actually making it happen, and I think I've been talking about the vision for so long, is people are like, yo, like, that she's out here, she's pulling it off. Like, I'm getting emails, but it's crazy because it's like city officials, government officials, mayor, like, towns, mayors. And yes. Like, look, like, they notice. Like, yes. you know, I'm just like, come from Jacksonville, we have this idea in my head. They're noticing. Yes. And they're calling. They're like, it's crazy because when I first started the project, you know, I had bought the land from the city and mm -hmm. like, you know, Miss Goodwin. So they thought I was a, a old white woman. Yeah. So when I showed up, they were like, I was like, I'm Miss Goodwin. And they were just like, you're Miss Goodwin? Uh, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and everything just got, like, normal because it was just, like, yo, we don't see y'all in these spaces. Like, we don't see Black women in real estate development. We barely see Black people, but we definitely don't see you all in these spaces. So, like, being in that space and being able to, like, keep up and it's just, like, no, you know, 
just under and I think being in that space and not having a finance background mm. still being able to keep up yes. with numbers and it's like they were everybody was like shocked and it's the one question I get they're like what did you go to school for did you study finance did mm. you study, like economics did you study construction did that and I was like uh I went to school for marketing so <laughs> <laughs> They shot, shot them. Things that, you know, I was hell-bent on learning and trying to, and even now trying to master the industry. Like, yeah. in all the industry as a whole, you know, not just one part of the real estate from the brokerage or the, it's just understanding the inner workings um, of the entire real estate world. So... I think that's probably like the most when I meet most people because they're like, oh, she's black and she doesn't really have like the way her trajectory was supposed to be set up. She really just got out here and was like, that's life. I'm going to jump hey, in. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm walking with God on this one. <laughs> right. I'm going to trust him and just. That's dope. That's dope. Like I said, it's uh your, your story is very you know, unique and, you know, you're coming from Florida, especially Jacksonville and, you know, you just don't expect, I can, I, I, I can only imagine the faces uh, when you walk up into them, you know, uh, them, them offices and those meetings, black, black girl power, all up and down. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, it, it ain't, it ain't who you expect. It is me. I'm here. Yeah, it's me. I, and I'm young too. What's up with energy? You know what I'm saying? Too. like that's the part that they're like shocked because like you have to think too and this is one thing I realized and I have to keep in mind throughout this entire journey is that the average age of just like a real estate broker is 58 the mm -hmm. average age of a person in real estate is in their mid 50s mm -hmm. so like, we're in our 20s early 30s like still 20s and 30s and our average, you know, the people who we're looking at and inspiring at, they're, you know, pushing 50, 60s. Mm. So, you know, we get caught up in the sense of like, like when I first got started, it's like everybody's doing all these things. Like, I remember like, I've had so many developers basically come to me like, oh, you know, you small time, like you're a little company, you know, mm -hmm. like you're doing little stuff. I see what your little stuff you got going. <laughs> I don't like all time and at first it kind of took like a hit to my ego like i'm not doing enough i'm not doing enough and then i had to realize like yo you comparing yourself to people that have 30 years on you like 20 plus like you still got time you're just getting started and they're mm -hmm. in the, like trenches of like life you know yeah yeah so, like, when you keep that in mind, it's just like you got to go into it also realizing that from their perspective, that also what they may be feeling. Yeah. So like on their end, you know, they're looking at it as a threat because you got this young person who's coming in and it's just being aware of that. So like, I think when you walk in a room knowing how to kind of like balance off like, hey, you know, yeah, you still going to respect me because I'm young, but you know, I don't want you to view me as this extreme threat because in reality, we can build together, you know? There's so much opportunity out here. There's no reason why nobody should be selfish. And there's so much money out here to be made. Uh, you know, I've never really, I, I, I've never gotten the concept. Uh, but, yo, we got some more people that's joined up in here. We got KB King 21 Shout out to you. I don't know if it's the first time up here, but... Appreciate you dropping by. Too Deep Sarah, uh, KB King 21 says dope. Ajia says love it. We got Danielle in the building. What's going on, Danielle? Danielle's also an investor out here, fam. You, uh, I know personally, she's up here in, in uh, actually, it's very interesting to get Danielle on here. Um, I'd like if she asked some questions. She actually just started a development. Uh, up here where she's doing a um, she's doing a multi-unit conversion so um, we was on the phone the other day talking about that uh, and uh, we got Zazzy Z3 hey, what's going on we got, hey Della girl what's up Della hey, how you doing Della what's going on hey <laughs> <laughs> we got Della up in here uh, uh, Danielle says hi 
Yeah, they they ask some questions because this um Gabriel is uh into developing and things like that. She's down there in DC kicking ass. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, KB King says this is Q. Keep doing what y'all do. Appreciate the support, brother. You know what I'm saying? Shout us out. Kai the King just joined in. Appreciate you dropping by. Look, if this is your first time hopping in on the show, we got a special guest this week. Uh, Gabriel Goldwyn down there in D.C. with Alluvial Enterprises, a uh, developer with small container homes and everything, anything outside of that. She's killing it. Uh, but, yeah, we're here every Thursday, 12 o'clock, answering all questions. Feel free to drop a question for me or Gabriel in that little comment box uh, with the question mark so I can post it on the screen so everybody can see. Um, but again, feel free to ask us anything. This is for uh, this is for you guys, not us. Uh, we want to be able to provide as much value and questions as possible. Um, let me see. We got. Uh, oh, we already answered the how do I get into building container homes? Or yes, hold on. KB King says he sent one. Uh, drop it. I just checked and I don't see anything. Drop it in the question bar for us, brother. Uh, let me see. There was a a Gia. As, do we ask homes in DC? I think she. We already talked about that, but she did say, uh, "What are the main obstacles for building those container homes in DC? What are some of the main obstacles you've ran into?" Um, I think the biggest obstacle of trying to build a container home in DC was the fact of permitting, and I think that's kind of one of everyone's main obstacles is permitting. Um, yeah. But yeah, we permitting, trying to get a permit was what, what felt like hell. And that was only because it was a new type of development. DC had never had, like, could, we have container homes here, but it was, these are the first container residential townhomes in the city. Yeah. So from an engineering perspective, we had to go through just hella different code modifications and making sure we could get the code right, making sure everybody understood it because, you know, this is also affordable housing that we're building on behalf of the city. So, yeah. you know, making sure that, like, it goes off with just smooth and preciseness. So I think once we were able to kind of get it in their faces and them to understand kind of like, hey, this is what we're doing and better understand the code. It made it easier. And even that we're now that we're pushing more products through permitting that are container, they're getting a chance to look at it and we're getting like similar reviewers who it's not like a shocker. Yeah. Um, but that was probably one of our biggest hurdles. Got you, got you. And I can imagine it's it's something new. You know what I'm saying? I think, yeah, one thing permitting is financing, too. Like, the longer it takes you to get your permits, you're still paying on that loan. Yeah. So, like, you know, having the capability to know, hey, I'm putting something completely out there. I don't know how long this is going to get tied up. I don't know, like, how long it's going to be before we get a permit. But, you know, because it's something very new, we have to be able to still carry the loan for this entire project to make sure yeah. we don't have a hitch. Right. So that was between, like, permitting and financing. Yeah. The things were, like, eh. Yeah, I can imagine. And real quick, before right we go to the next, uh, before we go to the next, uh, uh, Top, uh, question touch real quick on finance because you've raised a lot of money over the past couple of years and i know yeah how, like how, how how did that go like how did that happen for you real quick because i we got some questions here um basically yeah we did it various we had a, a bunch of different investors and we reached out and it was crazy because for our you know initial way I think it was a lot of nervous tension on everyone's end because all of these projects were like new, like we're doing something that like, you know, so I'm just thankful for the investors who we did have who trusted the fact of like, I want to be on the wave of something new. Yeah. Um, in that it may be. But when I first started out raising, you know, it was crazy because 
I knew I wanted to do all these things. And I had all of these people just on the brokerage side who came to me and they're like, I got money. I need a deal. Yeah. And I had all these people who have money and we need a deal. We were a brokerage. We need to start putting deals together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's when the whole concept of, hey, let's put together these raises came up. And it was like, hey, we, you know, we're going to raise. We have a $50,000 minimum. And we will start prioritizing like real estate development projects. And in that moment, I wasn't even aware of like, hey, you're shifting from a developer to like more of a fund. Yeah. Um, but that just opened up a whole new set of like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I had to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, people believe in you, and that's the best part about it, you know. And if you can definitely get folks to believe in you, you can build whatever you want, you know, uh, as long as it's within the guidelines, of course. <laughs> yeah. So. And... All right. Let me, uh, because we got we got a lot of damn questions here, and and, and uh, see, I done brought Danielle up in here, and Danielle going crazy right now. So, uh, <laughs> hold on, let me see. Uh, da, da, da. KB King says, where can I find a good flip? I have funding in the team, but no opportunities. Uh, brother, if you're looking for a flip, they're everywhere. All there's, I don't know what market you're in, but they're everywhere, right? So, uh, what, yeah, they're, 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 they're everywhere. And I don't mean to be broad, but when I say they're everywhere, they're everywhere. So if you're looking, if you have the team, you have the contractors. I don't know if you're connected with the agent. I don't know if you're looking to buy in D.C. Uh, or buy out here in Baltimore. You're looking at two agents or an agent and a broker yourself. So, you know, you can definitely reach out to us if you're looking for a flip. I don't know if you're looking to do anything off market. But if you are looking for something that's on the market, uh, we both can help depending on the market you're in. I'm only licensed in Maryland. Gabriel probably licensed in I Maryland and D.C. Yeah basically so look hit us up offline if you're looking for some uh if you're looking to find a good flip if you have the team you have the funding then you're the person that we both want to be talking to um so let's see who else we got we got uh where uh da, da, da. uh kb king i'm gonna skip i'm gonna skip that last question because i want to go to uh then yeah she's uh she's going ham right now with these questions <laughs> so uh all right, she says, uh, Danielle says, what's the average ROI for container homes? Do you sell them or do you hold and rent? Or, you know, what's your plan? So that is an interesting question because that is the one thing that everybody and other developers have been trying to kind of tell us we need to pick one. Either you're going to be a, a buy and hold developer or you're, you know, you're selling them rent, like, what is your plan? And at the end of the day, the basis is we're still a general contractor. So a lot of these we hold, some we hold ourselves, but for the most part, we're, we're building for clients. Mm. So that is the basis, like we're a developer slash GC. So like not everything we build, we're holding for rent. Like right now we're working on some mixed use project or my first like major mixed use project and that'll be a long-term like hold yeah because it'll be you know close to 70 units but that's slightly like that's a different structure from what we're doing now the ones we're doing now in dc we bought the land we're just building the homes and selling them yeah um, and it's just a buy and sell but you know, we do a stream of tiny homes for clients as well. And their ROIs, I mean, the mortgage on the tiny home itself. So Section A in D.C. and our higher tier wards, which are more uh, uh, black, black areas. Yeah, <laughs> so, I like the urban areas. Like, yeah, urban. urban. Yeah, urban. Urban. <laughs> So in more of our urban areas, so um, in the higher tier wards, like Section 8 in D.C. pays like up to 1200 bucks, you know? So they're paying up to 1200 bucks. So even if you have a tiny home, it costs you 75000 your mortgage on that, taxes, everything, both in is $350 additional to your mortgage, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting 1200 bucks from D.C. government 
every single month to like rent that out. So like yeah. to find something in DC right now at 75,000 is like a needle in a haystack. Almost mm -hmm. gonna happen. And if it is like you literally need to have cash and can close in three days. Yeah. Why? Because everybody has Everybody's cash. gonna be on it. You know, I literally have investor clients who are like, find me a deal. I can't, I don't want to spend more than 600K. And the cash is like sitting in their account. So like yeah. when those 75,000 ones come, they can literally close like in the day and have cash in the in your account. So yeah. it's the title firm that you're waiting on on those three days to pull their lives together. Exactly. So it's like when they say cash is king, it is king in this area so like you know we have investor clients who are kind of they're all over but yeah we do a, a mixture of everything if you are in dc and you have a piece of land and you say hey can you guys come out and give me a bid just to build and you decide you know hey i'm gonna pay my construction take my markup and go from there that's why i yeah. tell people you know, even with clients who come to us who are interested in building, I always encourage them to allow us to help them find the land and yeah. work them to get it funded and built from the ground up versus them buying it after we've already built it. Because after I've already built it, I'm charging a premium on it, you know? Get that money. So after I've already built it, you know, I'm charging market, like I'm charging a premium. But if yeah. I can work with you with your bill you're paying what the bill cost is and you're the owner and you're hiring me in the same manner as you would a normal gc yeah so that's where you know roi perspective you need to figure out what you're gonna do if you're gonna be a buy a whole developer or if you're gonna be a gc for other people you don't need to kind of play both and i'm like why not you know i got this far why not why you not know you know Good, que <laughs> Good question, Danielle. <laughs> yeah. Good question. We got some more people that popped up in here. Policy and Pockets, what's going on? Uh, we got some questions from Ajia. Uh, we also got some more questions from Danielle. Northeast E joined in. What's going on, Ashford, Montreal? How you doing, Naughty? My nature. Hey, how you doing, Cole Beasley? What's up, brother? Long time, man. I miss you, brother. Uh, greatness. I am. What's going on? What's going on? I'm about to buy a part of it. Okay. Uh, that's there. Yeah. I'll, I do want to get to her second question, which was, um, where do you find the land to build these container homes, and do you own the land under them? Land in D.C., I guess. Okay. So everybody has this, oh, you know, you don't own the land in D.C. You don't own the land in Maryland. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you don't pay your taxes, DC government will take your land. Yes. But own the land. But you can't get your land took if you don't yeah. pay. <laughs> <laughs> they want their coins always. So it's like you own it, but you don't own it. But you yeah. own it because you keep paying these taxes. As soon That's as you it. Pay taxes, <clears throat> give me that. Talk about it. You yeah. know? They take so, that. That's where that whole like. Do I own it? Do I kind of not own it? But actually, it's crazy because land is the thing that most people don't think to like heavily look for. Yeah. Everybody's always in my ear, find me a deal, find me a deal, find me a deal. And I'm like, yeah. you realize like, and I, it's even right now working with like a lot of my investor clients, getting them to understand like, hey, you just bought this house for, you know, 600K. Yeah. You just, you know, two into it. And yeah, you just sold it for one, two, and made a little spread. But you realize we could have bought a plot of land and built the whole house for under 600K. And you could have did two and made mm. the same profit margin. Like, mm. so mm. I did the approach that, you know, you're taking with the property. But I think land is something that people, you know, they don't often understand because there's so many moving components to it that they shy yeah. away, from, yeah. you know, because yeah. it's a lot of moving pieces and it's not for like the faint at heart if you don't have someone who really understands land development or they're not trying to really put the energy into understanding it you can buy bad land you know you can buy swampy land you can buy marshland you can buy land that has bad soil and that is not buildable so like land has issues you know you can right now even on one of our projects the soil is like shit like it's buildable mm. yeah yeah, yeah. 
So like you with land, it's one of those ones that's like people really don't understand it. So every time I flood to it. So you'll be surprised, like I come across land deals and it's like, oh, this has been on the market for, you know, a couple weeks now versus a single family home in DC, you know, days, if it's a good days, deal. Days, it's, it's gone, land, it's gone. Land, people have to evaluate, it doesn't move as quickly. And the nice thing about that is it gives you time to really do the due diligence. Yeah. In order to make a decent buy. Yeah, yeah, I got you. We got a... We got a, I think we probably got about maybe about 15 minutes left, but I want to, I want to kind of ask this question because uh, Danielle said something down in the comments. I w I'm, I'm about to buy a plot of land. Uh, <laughs> so if, so for people that want to buy land, right, that, um, that want to get into land development, uh, give us some quick hitters on uh, how they should go about it and what's the, uh, you know, what's kind of like the process that they should expect when it comes to buying land? So the first process with land is that you have to understand that it's going to be, you're going to save money, but it's going to cost you more on the front end. Right. Like, you'll make more money, but on the front end, you have to be prepared to spend a little bit more money than you would in a normal deal. And the first thing is a feasibility study. Like, you know, I've seen people buy land and a ton of land thinking like, oh, man, I didn't buy 20 acres of land. I'm going to really do da 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 <laughs> And after a feasibility, only two and a half acres of land is feasible and buildable. Uh... Yeah, here. in your head and then based off of the zoning and some other issues they can only build a building this like this big or a residential home or you know like some places in maryland clients call me like oh i bought five acres and you look at the zone and it's like yo you can only build one house per five acres according to this zone yeah like you know with you like you have to do the feasibility going into it or you just will not like you'll miss it. You'll, yeah. you'll bad buy, you'll go in and you'll cost yourself more time and money in the long run, especially if you try to like take the cheap route by not getting it done mm. or taking what somebody else did and not doing your own due diligence because you got to think you're, you're going to tell me anything because you want to sell the home. So like yeah. you're going to it's great land, great soil. Come on, build a farm. I buy it, and I'm like, I'm trusting. Mm. You. And I buy it. I'm like, yo, this is it's shitty. Yeah. But I trusted him. When in reality, I should do my own due diligence and spend the money versus being cheap. So yeah, it's just one of those lessons you learn in land development. Do yeah. feasibility study always. I always get the feasibility study, and once you, I'm guessing, once you get the feasibility study, did things will, you know, you start reaching out to your architects and things like that, investors, and that's when you start getting more to the design phase. Um, your architect is the one who can also pull together that feasibility study. So if you go with like a design build firm or an architect, they'll be the one to really kind of sit down and hone in on that feasibility study. And then getting with like the next thing is a geotechnical engineer, just getting someone to come out and test the soil, like a simple soil test, a simple soil report, just to make sure like, hey, I'm not completely screwed. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Now we got another question from a G uh, a G. See, I think we already answered the first half of this question, which was pertaining to uh, how well the container projects have been received in the local community. And she says, I know the campus project project uh, wasn't very well received. You know what that is, the campus project? Yeah, so there were some, there is a container apartment building in Brookland. Yeah. And, you know, it was student housing. So it's student housing, and they didn't do much to it. They just slapped a bunch of boxes together. It was yeah. like, students. This is it. Here it is. Added utilities, we put in all your plumbing, like we added what you need to the inside, here you go. So yeah. like thing to like clad it, dress it up, beautify it, like even their, you know, 
this it was it was student housing you know they projected that hey students are probably going to come tear it up like we need to make an affordable sustainable housing product yeah so that was kind of their whole um they just slapped some they just slapped some shit on there it didn't really make it like community inclusive yeah it wasn't you know it it wasn't much design to it outside yeah. of containers being just stacked up and popped in and out. Like it was very minimal. Um, yeah, they just my, did the bare minimum. Yeah, so I think that's why it wasn't as received because when people like walk by it, they look like a bunch of containers stacked. And that was kind of the one feedback that everybody came in with us off the rip is like, I don't want to see a bunch of containers stacked up. Like, yeah. I don't bunch of overpriced trailers. I don't want to see a bunch of stacked up, like, looking. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, nah, I got you. And and that kind of goes into, uh, <clears throat> we got a we got a couple more people that joined in. Faithful Finances, what's going on? Uh, glad you joined in. Doc hey, D. Hey. D. Dur, you go. What's going on? Just called me Logan, said dope content. Appreciate you, brother. The Real Estate King joined in. Uh, again, if you guys are new, if you guys are watching the show, I'm here every Thursday, 12 o'clock, uh, doing real estate investing Q&A sessions. Uh, it's either myself or I have special guests on like Gabriel, uh, and I have them basically accessible to you, and you're able to ask any and everything uh, for our hour-long session. So this is every Thursday, 12 o'clock. Make sure you snap a screenshot of us right now, sitting here talking, running our mouths, and drop it in your story tag us and show and tell everybody to basically uh, come join the live session, even though we got probably about 10 minutes left or show up next Thursday. And uh, ba basically I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this information out there for y'all. Like this is for y'all. It's not for us. It's for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I like to drop gems and make sure that you guys aren't alone in your real estate endeavors, because at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff, when you talk about investing real estate, this is big time stuff. And Oh, Danielle said smile real quick. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 I want to make sure that you guys aren't alone in your in your journeys for what you guys uh, want to do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Danielle, I think we already smiled already. I don't know if you took the pic. Give me a thumbs up if you already took it. If not, we'll do it again. Okay, she got it. Um, but I want to get into something real quick, a, a, a topic, because so, you're, you're on the development side, right? You know, I'm, I'm not on the development side yet. You know what I'm saying? We, hey, you might have some future projects going on right now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I want to kind of go into this question um, that I, I think it would be a good question for you because you see it on a different level and scale. So um, <clears throat> and this has been a hot topic, gentrification, right? Uh, so what are your thoughts uh, when it comes to uh, revitalize versus gentrify, right? And making sure that, you know, when we start developing into these more urban Black communities, that things are inclusive versus just like, this is what y'all getting. I don't care if it fits or not fits. You know what I'm saying? How do we, how do we revitalize these more urban black communities uh, while being inclusive and, and and making sure that dollar comes back around economically? You know, from a development standpoint. What are your thoughts and like what have you seen uh, from the development side? So you want to hear the truth, or you want? I'll, hey, keep it funky. This is why we're here. That hard, like, eh. You know what I think? Mm. I, that. Mm. I think that we are in a space right now to where we there is a need for black developers because we need to be leading the forefront of how our communities are developed. So I want to throw this analogy out because I know we're gonna, we are limited on time and it's just going to make sense for everybody. Think Chinatown. So if you look at Chinatown right now in the United States, you go to gallery place, you got a whole Chinatown. Everything's Chinese. If you eat at the Chinese place, it's Chinese. Chinese culture. Everybody embracing Chinese everything. You go to eat at a Chinese restaurant, guess what? 
Chinese person not serving you your food, you feel some type of way because you're in Chinatown embracing the Chinese experience. You go to Chinatowns in Vegas, Chinatowns all over the world, New York, and nobody says anything. And we allow the Chinese to capitalize on their culture, you know? And we get the chance for everybody, you know, they capitalize on Chinese culture, but they project it and they sell it to US Americans. I think our role as black developers, we need to figure out a way to capitalize on black culture and allow other people to pay us for that experience. So I think when we develop these communities, we need to begin to focus cur com on communities that have been curated specifically for us. And what I mean is, if we look at all the shit that we consume, we're the largest seafood consumers, we're the largest urban wear consumers, you know, we wear movie theaters, we go to the movie theaters more than any other race, hair and beauty care, we dominate billions of dollars, but the influence that we have on that is none. Mm. Why don't we have communities that when you go to them, guess what? We have black owned theaters, or we have communities that have spaces to where you can go in this one central area and fully capitalize on black culture. And mm. not just one place, not like a black Wall Street like Tulsa, where you only have one, and that one place can get burned down and then we all forgot about it. I mean, mm -hmm. just like you got multiple Chinatowns across the world and nobody is bugging the same way Asian family wealth has been able to exceed white family wealth, like the exact same way, you know, they've been able to capitalize on our culture, same thing for us. And we develop those pockets in communities that have been curated again for us. And we, everything mm -hmm. we consume, you walk in that thing and you like, man, they got braid shops, barbershop, <laughs> any type of hair shop, beauty supply stores. They got barbecue, soul food, seafood. We the largest vegan starters. We got vegan food. We got <laughs> ballet. Hello. Ballet, y'all. Let's go to this yes. community. Because yes. I, I want the best seafood. And I know this these black folks, this is what they do. Yes. It's you want the black, the best Chinese? I'm going to Chinatown because I know right. they. You know? <laughs> it's just we have to start changing the narrative, and that's something that we have not done yet. So when it comes to revitalization and gentrification, I think we need to. It's great. We just need to be at the forefront of putting our products out there and letting other people capitalize on our culture versus us being a consumer culture and only capitalizing or only purchasing theirs. Like giving them a chance to, you know, bring our value up because they love our culture so much. We've, you know, took hold of it and now we're selling it to you for you to bask in it in the same way we bask in your culture. Mm, mm, and it's, so mm. that's my whole Mm, I love that. I love that response. <laughs> oh man, yo, I, I, so I really want to dig into this topic. I wish we actually talked about it earlier because we had a, we had some questions. So I got my two minute warning already because uh, you know IG likes to shut us down after an hour. But I did want to get that question out. Uh, I got about a minute and thirty seconds. Uh, but Keneal, basically everybody wanted to hear the truth. Tell the truth, 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 truth. Faith finance says truth. Uh, the other faith says truth. Uh, Keneal says 100. And she had given a million claps. She is Kyra joined in. Faithful finance says what, a, what I'm hearing is you're creating the first black community blueprint and we're going to put it in every city. Uh, you're damn right. Yes, 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 yes. Kyra King, thumbs up. Faithful finance says that's good. Keneal says fire. Uh, guys, I got a minute left. You guys know IG will not let me save these videos if I go down past a minute. So real quick, while I got about 20 seconds, I want to thank you guys for showing up, showing out. I don't think I got a busy schedule today. I would go another hour. Uh, I usually do that if we get a lot of time, but I got a busy schedule today. I got to take care of some fires or some of these rentals. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, thank you, Gabriel, for showing up again. Everybody, uh, tag us, screenshot us, and uh, drop this in your story so we can uh, do this again every Thursday, 12 o'clock. Gabrielle, you're welcome to come on next week if you want, and we can definitely chop it up some more. Um, appreciate you guys. You got anything left to say? 
staying on with us. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Thank you guys for showing up. All right, guys. Bye. Peace. <laughs>